Archer's looking for some poop to eat or something. Anyways, uh, last weekend I uh, managed to crack a couple ribs. Um, you get to see it or hear it in my next um, ride series. Kind of sucks. So I'm not uh, riding this weekend, but I'm going to do some KLX 140G maintenance stuff here. Okay, so today I'm uh, replacing the front sprocket, replacing the rear sprocket, um, putting a new chain on, and I'm taking the swing arm and linkage off and uh, cleaning that out <clears throat> and re-greasing it and everything like that. Um, now some KLX 140G specific info. Uh, the bike is geared 1357 from the factory. Uh, Sunstar and Rinthal and I think JT have front sprockets. Uh, no one has a 57 tooth rear sprocket. So I'm just going to replace uh, both with OEM, uh, which is fine. They're pretty inexpensive. Um, the chain on here from factory is a 428 uh, 134 link DID non O-ring uh, rivet chain. Uh, that was not going to be in stock for a long time. So I ordered an RK uh, 428 MXZ uh, as a clip style master, which I'm not thrilled about, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, now, if you have a rivet chain and uh, you need to get it off your bike, um, one way, like if you're going to dispose of it, is to take a grinder and grind the rivets and push the pins out. Um, or if you're taking your swing arm off to do maintenance, uh, once you have the swing arm off, the chain will just, you'll just be able to take it off the bike. So mine's going to come off in one piece, um, then I'll clean it up and I'll put it in my leather jacket and I'll take it to the drive-in in case I get in a rumble with some uh, socias over there. All right, so things we're going to take off, um, we're going to take off the uh, sprocket cover there. Um, with the bike on the ground, I'm going to break the torque on the bolt that runs through the swing arm. Okay, it's a lot easier to do that for the high torque uh, nuts and bolts when the bike's on the ground than when it's on the stand. So we'll, we'll loosen that when it's on the ground. Um, <clears throat> we're going to have to take the chain guide off. That's a chain guard. That's a chain guide. All right, so that's going to come off the swing arm. Uh, I'm going to break the torque on the rear axle and also uh, the uh, nuts that hold the rear sprocket on. And then on the other side, uh, we'll have to take the clips off and things that hold the, the rear brake line on there. So do that stuff on the ground um, before you put it on the stand. It's just a lot easier because you got the weight of the bike uh, working for you as you try to get those loose. Uh, I recommend that you go to the hardware store and purchase a breaker bar to do that. It just makes it a lot easier than struggling with like a, a short handle like this. They'll come off easy with the breaker bar. You can loosen them easy. And while we're on the topic here, um, if you don't have uh, a socket set or sockets for your bike, because um, they're, they're usually, well, for the Japanese bikes, of course, it's metric sizes, uh, probably the Euro bikes too. But uh, if you're buying the sockets that you need, then... This is a six point socket and uh, this one here is a, a 12 point socket. Okay. Now I recommend you buy these six point sockets. Uh, they tend to grip the nut uh, or the bolt head on the flats, whereas the 12 points uh, tend to grip them on the corners. And so those will round off uh, the bolt head or the nut uh, pretty quick uh, versus the six point socket. <clears throat> Uh, but if you don't have six point sockets, then use what you got. All right, so like I said, I'm going to loosen this stuff up. I'm going to get it up on the stand. I'll pop the rear tire off. And then uh, I'll probably film the actual sprocket stuff in detail. There's a couple things to know about the front sprocket. And then uh, I'll film uh, getting the swing arm off and everything. All right, well, me and Arch are going to get to work. It looks like Arch is already at work out there. He's digging a massive hole, of course. He's going to lay down in the dirt. All right, we'll be back in a little bit. Told you. All right, hey, I forgot to mention, uh, if you have a KLX, um, you will need to remove your uh, rear brake pedal in order to get at the, uh, 
the nut there for the swing arm. Um, it might not be the same on every bike, but just an FYI. So that'll have to come off too. All right, here's a tip. Uh, if you're taking your brake pedal off and you remove the cotter pin behind the clevis pin here, and you're trying to get this out and it won't come out, uh, instead of prying on it or being like, oh, fuck this, uh, I'm just gonna pay someone to do this job. Um, just push down on your brake pedal, jiggle it, and then just take your finger and you can pull that sucker right out of there. Okay, now it's free from the clevis. You can just unbolt this and then your brake pedal will be free and out. Okay, on the, the KLX, after you get the clevis pin free, you need a H8 to get this out of here. Uh, you could also use a eight millimeter um, Allen wrench if that's all you had, but it would be difficult to get a torque value on that, putting it back in. But you can, you can pick up a whole set of these uh, on Amazon for like 20 bucks or something. Anyways, so Lefty Lucy. I'll go ahead and take this off of here. <clears throat> now I want to show you this if you're a, a KLX owner. Uh, any KLX 140 will be the same. All right. So this, this bolt here just passes straight through. Uh, there's no nut or anything on the other side. Some bikes, this goes through, and then there's uh, like another uh, washer and cotter pin on the other side, but not, not in this case. Okay, so on my bike, I've got two washers uh, behind here that go uh, right there. Okay. Uh, the reason I have two washers is because I'm using a aftermarket Tusk KX 450 brake pedal because I wanted a longer pedal than stock. But if you have stock, you're just going to have one washer. All right. Now I'll pop this out. Okay. This bolt goes through the brake pedal, through that hole. So bolt, brake pedal, washers into the the frame. But this has two little uh, O-rings on it, two little rubber O-rings. So uh, you want to clean that up and grease that up before you put it back in there. All right, on to the next thing. All right, next up, uh, we're gonna take these clips off, or these rings, which hold the rear brake line onto the swing arm. Now, the screws on a Japanese bike are not Phillips head. Um, if you use a Phillips head, sometimes you can get away with it, but other times you wind up ruining uh, the screw. They're what's called GIS or JIS, Japanese Industrial Standard. Okay, and the, the JIS um, screwdrivers are, are ground different than a Phillips head. Same with flatheads. So they're, they're numbered, they have a, like a number sequence. And like, this is a, a handle with the removable, reversible um, JIS drivers. Uh, it's made by Vessel. I uh, got this on Amazon. Um, it's like $20 or something. <laughs> Almost everything I buy on Amazon is $20. But yeah, this is nice. Um, and it comes with the complete set of JIS uh, Phillips and Flathead. So anyways, uh, that's just the tip. Especially on, you know, it's maybe not a big deal on these big screws like this. But on small screws, like the screws that hold uh, the, the cover on like your front brake master cylinder. Uh, the metal is pretty soft, and if you use a Phillips head, it, it can be real easy to strip that and then have a stuck uh, screw, which sucks ass. Uh, I've done that. So it's worth getting a set of these. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take these, these guys off here so that when I remove the swing arm, the brake, doesn't, brake line doesn't try to come with it. All right. So the rear tire is off, and then on the chain guide here, uh, to get that off, there's two eight millimeter bolts right here. So I've got mine loosened. So let's pull those out. All right, so you see that, that comes off of there. Uh, to get the chain completely out, you just take these, these two out here and this will separate. That's all it does and it, it goes on this welded on piece on the swing arm here.
All right, so there you have it. All four bolts are out of the chain guide, and you can see it's totally free from the chain. Uh, there's just two halves here. There's a plastic piece and a, a plate, and it just kind of all goes back together. Uh, that's a wear part. The uh, if that plastic piece there wears out, you can order that and replace that. <clears throat> but it's it's in good shape. All right, here's here's the linkage on the bike. Uh, now on on some bikes, uh, the uh, dog bones here look identical front to rear and left to right and uh, you, it, you might get confused as to which goes where so first thing is before you take anything like this apart take a little photo or video of it just so you have something to reference um, also have your shop manual which will have pictures of everything but uh, the, the KLX 140G you can only put these on one way so it's it's not a problem um, but if your dog bones do look very similar, you can just take a Sharpie and put like L for left and a real shitty looking arrow for the direction it should face. And that'll, that'll help you put everything back together like it was. Now on the KLX, it has this uh, edge right here and these bolt heads have a flat surface. So when you, when you take these off, you just have to loosen or tighten the nut. So there's one here. There's one that's kind of hard to see right there okay so the bolts go left to right left to right uh, this is uh, holding the shock on the rear shock mount uh, this is just a bolt there's no nut these have nuts on the other side this goes through left to right and hidden behind here is one more uh, bolt like these that one goes through right to left and the nut is on this side so yeah go ahead and, and take those off uh, the shock will not fall out. Uh, you'll be taking the linkage off, and then we'll be able to remove the swing arm by removing the bolt that goes all the way through the frame. All right, so that's what I'm going to do next. All right, so the uh, all the linkage bolts and crap are, are taken out. Uh, the swing arm is still on. The next thing we're going to do is take an 8mm, remove this bolt and this bolt, and pull the uh, the sprocket cover off. And then we're going to lift the chain off the front sprocket. After that's done, um, on the other side is the nut for this. I've already loosened it when it was on the ground. So I'm just going to take the nut off, pull this big long bolt out through the frame, and then the whole swing arm will lift off the bike. So I'll take the cover off, and I'll take that off, then I'll lay this all out on the ground, how, it's, how it goes together. All right, for uh, KLX 140 owners, this is the sprocket cover, and then underneath it is the uh, case guard here. So it went in like that. And then there's a short screw that's completely threaded. That's on the bottom. And then there's a long screw and a spacer here that goes on the top. So this sits on top of that. This goes on top of there, kind of like that and the uh, long screw, short screw. That's how you put it back together. All right, there's the uh, front sprocket. It's a nasty looking thing. That's all full of mud and shit back in there. Uh, this has like a sir clip on it, holding this on. Uh, I'm gonna take, uh, I have a nylon uh, toothbrush, which you could, if you have a, just go buy a toothbrush. Don't use an old one with like toothpaste and shit on it. Just go get one or stop by a sporting goods store or something and get uh, like a pack of nylon gun cleaning brushes and you can use that to like scrub shit like this off of here. All right, so I'm going to clean that up. All right, so I, I brushed most of the mud off of the uh, sprocket there with my nylon brush. Um, be careful on the KLX. There's a little wire right here that plugs into this, so don't, don't break that off. It's right down in there. Um, now this... Like I said, it has a snap ring or circlip holding the sprocket on. So if you don't have any special tools, uh, you can probably just push that off with a small flathead screwdriver or two small screwdrivers. Uh, the ring will separate outwards and then slide off. Um, but if you want to get special tools, then this is a set of <coughs> ex <coughs> excuse me external snap ring pliers. Now I got this whole set from Tecton on Amazon. It's probably 20 bucks. <laughs> but uh, what these what these pliers do 
see they have these little points okay and those points there's a little hole here oops, a little hole here a little hole here on this circlip so they'll go in there and these pliers these these are external snapping pliers so when you squeeze them they separate and internal snap ring pliers they will come together like normal pliers when you uh, squeeze them so let me try to get the camera on a box or something and uh, take this off of here all right it's a pretty shitty box setup but i'll try to do this here <clears throat> all right so i'm just going to separate these a little bit and then i'm going to put the pins on the end of the pliers into the two holes and then squeeze the pliers and you can see the ring comes right off okay just like that now it's a little fucked up looking so i i ordered a new one all right so now that that's off of there let's see what's going on here this should just come off the splines yep there we go so that's the old front sprocket all right let me grab the new one and then uh take a look at uh, a comparison between the new and the old one, see if we can see any wear. Okay, so the old sprocket on top and the new one behind, and you can definitely see the, the teeth on the old one have worn down. They're much, much more pointy and narrow compared to the, <clears throat> the new one there. All right, so, uh, I'm going to put this back on here. All right. When you look at the, uh, the front sprocket here on the shaft, there's a, uh, a steel uh, spacer, and behind that is an O-ring. I have, I have spares for that, but I don't see any sign of any oil leakage or anything. So I'll just hold on to those, um, maybe just proactively replace it next sprocket change. Now, before I slide the sprocket on, I like to use some of this stuff, some anti-seize. Uh, you can use nickel or copper. And I just put that on the splines and then slide the sprocket on to uh, preclude a sprocket ever getting stuck on there or anything. I don't think this will last long enough to get stuck on there, but I had to take one off my friend's uh, BMW and it was, it was on there pretty, pretty freaking good because we didn't, he didn't have any of this on. But we put some on and now it comes off just fine. All right, so I'm going to put some of this on, not a ton, just a little, and then I'll, I'll slide that on. One thing about this anti-seize, I don't, I don't know why, but it, it smells really good. It almost has like a grape type smell to it. So if you've got little kids, put it up on a high shelf. All right, so I'm just going to put a little dab there in the middle. And then put a little bit on the shaft. All right, that is plenty. I'm just gonna smear this around a little with my finger. It's pretty messy crap. Have some paper towels handy. All right, so that's on there. Now, uh, the, the sprocket here, both sides are exactly the same. There's no front or back. Some bikes, there'll be like a ridge right here, and the other side won't have one. So you, if your bike's like that, you'll need to check your, your owner's manual or your service manual to see how it's supposed to go but this is just going to go back on here somehow <laughs> if i can get it lined up come on you can do it i can't do it i'm a retard There we go. All right, so it's on there. Just clean up this extra shit here. All right, uh, let me grab the uh, circlip. And there's uh, some grooves on the spline here cut into each uh, tooth that the, the circlip will just slide into. All right. <clears throat> Here, everything is off the bike. So that's the swing arm, linkage stuff here. Now, uh, 
there's these little spacers in here. This is where the shock uh, lower mount shock lower mount shock bolt goes through. Uh, there's a short spacer, and then there's this long spacer here. Ooh, if I can get it out of there. Okay. So it's it's longer. And this is a, a short one. Uh, they only go in one way. And there's your dog bones here on the KLX. Uh, these don't completely separate like they might on some bikes. But anyways, inside of here and all over, there's these little needle bearings and then spacers and oil seals and stuff. Um, so next, I'm just going gonna, gonna to clean all this up, very carefully get the dirt away from all the openings. Um, and then I'm going to clean out the old grease and pack it all up with some uh, fresh Bell Ray waterproof grease. So that's the next step. All right, we're here at the uh, awesomely clean workbench, which I keep promising to clean up but never do. All right, so here's the, <coughs> excuse me, here's the small parts. Um, I use my toothbrush to get most of the mud and uh, you know dirty, greasy mud from the outside of it brushed off. I'm most concerned about the areas around the grease seals. Now, uh, on this and, and these, there's going to be these uh, spacers in here. That's the silver part. This uh, rubbery part <clears throat> is an oil seal or grease seal. Um, we're not taking those out. Um, underneath this uh, spacer is uh, needle bearings that uh, this rides in. So the, the bolt actually goes through this uh, steel cylinder here. And the whole thing spins freely or moves freely on the needle bearings. Okay, So if you're going to take these out... Just very carefully with your finger, push, push that out. Yep. Okay, there, it's coming out. Okay, and go slow, and especially go slow when you're putting them back in because you don't want to damage the needle bearings. They're called that because they look like little needles. Okay, so that came out. All right, <clears throat> so let's see if we can see in there. Yeah, not really. All right, there's little things in there that look like needles. <clears throat> And uh, those, those are the actual bearings, and this is the seal. Now, a full service on these components would be to replace the bearings and seals. Um, <clears throat> if you put your finger in there, you should be able to rotate around on the bearing, and you shouldn't feel any notchiness or anything. Okay. If, as you rotate around, oops, <clears throat> you feel like a notch. A notchy feeling or some drag or something like that then you probably want to think about replacing the bearings <clears throat> but then you'll need uh, some bearing drivers to do that um, I'm not going to do that right now as long as all of these are okay and then uh, I'm just gonna clean out the old grease and uh, pack new grease in here now if it's a sealed bearing like a round bearing that's sealed on both sides uh, you don't really have to pack it with grease just like clean all this crap up flush out the old grease Grease it all up and put the spacer back in carefully. Um, these are going to be needle bearings. Where this right here, you can kind of see see the little needles. They're like little rods. And each one of those moves. So I can put my finger in here and kind of feel how that's going. And it feels all right. All right, so what you're doing is I'm flushing the old grease out of here. And then I'm going to take the Bell Ray grease and I'm going to pack it in. Just... You pack it in by putting some on and smooshing it in and smooshing it in and go all the way around until it's really packed full of grease. Um, to get the old stuff out of there, there's probably different products you can use, uh, but here's the spacers that come out of there. Um, I like to use Slip 2000. Uh, it's, you can get it at uh, gun stores, sporting goods stores. Okay, it's water-based. Uh, it's biodegradable. It's non-toxic. Uh, it's safe for all plastic wood metal uh, believe me if the this product was damaging someone's firearm or something uh, dudes would be freaking out on the uh, outdoors forums but i've used this for a number of years it's it's basically a, a cleaner and degreaser but it's very mild so it won't it won't damage anything but you can use something like that um, i wouldn't be using a toothbrush inside of here or anything just some lint free shop towels or something like that <clears throat> And when you push these out, <clears throat> uh, I generally just do one at a time and make sure you don't mix up the spacers there. 
but in your service manual, it will have info about like tolerances on the spacers and uh, when they should be replaced and stuff like that. I don't know. Uh, you know, if you want to be proactive, maybe once a year or every two years, go ahead and replace all these bearings and stuff. Uh, if you're going to replace them, um, you can order like SKF bearings, which are super high quality, or the OEM bearings, which are usually SKF or uh, I forget the name. It's a Japanese brand. Um, <clears throat> starts with a K. But anyways, those are good bearings. I would not uh, get like an all balls kit or something, just my personal opinion. Uh, it's, they're kind of like no-name ball bearings and things. It's probably really not not worth putting that in your bike to save a couple bucks because you'll regret it later. All right, so I'm going to just clean this crap up and pack it full of grease. There's also um, a spacer and a bunch of needle bearings on the actual swing arm itself at the at the uh, point where the uh, the big bolt goes through the frame to hold the swing arm on. So I'm going to clean that one up too. I'll be back. All right, <clears throat> got the uh, linkage and bearings, uh, swing arm bearings, all that crap greased up, repacked with fresh waterproof grease. I uh, took the rear sprocket off. Um, this is the old one. This is a nice shiny new one 57 teeth it's crazy now on a lot of sprockets rear sprockets this will be recessed so the bolt will sit down in there uh, it's not like that on the kawasaki um, the bolts are like this they're just like standard kind of bolts and there's a locking nut and a washer uh, the bolt goes through the hole and on the reverse side is the washer and then the locking nut so again, the washer and nut will be on the back side and the bolt goes through. And let's uh, hold this up in a second. See if we see any signs of wear. Oh yeah, look at that. You can see, let me get this out of the way. Oh yeah, those teeth are definitely much pointier, more chewed up than the new one. All right, so I'm going to put this uh, new rear sprocket on. I'm just going to bolt it on and torque it up. And that's probably about it for today. Uh, it's starting to get late. Archer needs to poop and get fed. Um, tomorrow, as long as everything goes okay, uh, I might mow my lawn. And then uh, I'll put everything back together and kind of get everything back where it should be. All right, I'll see you. I'll record another video tomorrow or something.